Joining us on Money News is economist, investment analyst, and financial journalist Mark Skousen. Mr. Skousen is the editor of Forecasts and Strategies and the author of The Making of Modern Economics. And Mr. Skousen, thanks for being with us today. Hey, my pleasure. The Fed has unveiled an open-ended round of quantitative easing and says rates will likely stay low for a few years. However, given that rates are already low and stock prices are arguably high, will the latest Fed stimulus measures work? You know, I really don't understand why uh, the Fed did this, except for political reasons, maybe to reelect uh, President Obama, because the Fed chairman, Ben Bernanke, knows that Mitt Romney plans to replace him if he gets elected. So, uh, you know, I think the Fed has lost some of its political independence, unfortunately, as a result of the financial crisis of 2008. But the Fed is stimulating, artificially stimulating the economy, uh, keeping interest rates low for a long period of time. This is really beneficial for those of us who are in the stock market. We're making, we're, we're profiting from the, the Fed. And I do think uh, the economy is gradually recovering despite uh, the, uh, uh, the negatives out there with Obamacare and uh, Dodd-Frank and, and these other regulations, Sarbanes-Oxley, that are really hurting our economy. So, uh, and also the threat of higher taxes. Uh, I think Mitt Romney will be a much better choice as, as president. Uh, but in any case, uh, we are seeing a strong, uh, uh, a strong stock market recovery, not necessarily an economic recovery. And it's because of that and political reasons, I think the Fed is engaged in this, uh, what we're calling uh, uh, Q eternity. <laughs> Mark, let me ask you about unemployment. The U.S. unemployment rate fell to 7.8% in September from 8.1% in August, mainly due to a surge in demand for part-time workers. What is your take on the labor market and what needs to happen for it to really gain some steam? Well, I'm kind of like in Jack Welch's camp uh, and, and being very skeptical of that 7.8% figure. Uh, I think it's very unfortunate that the unemployment rate does not include discouraged workers who have stopped looking for work. If you include those, it's over 20 million Americans out of work. And if you look at uh, shadowstat, uh, shadowstatstats.com, which is a uh, service that's put together by John Williams, an economist, he says the unemployment rate is really over 20% when you include discouraged workers. And we have so many people now who are long-term unemployed who have been looking for a job for over a year. And this is all a new phenomenon in the United States. It used to be around 1% of long-term unemployment, and now it's 4 or 5%. So there's a lot of problems in the labor market, and I think it's largely due to, uh, uh, to companies just not willing to hire. There. There's a lot of uncertainty out there about the future, who's going to win the election. Once the uh, new president is decided who that is, uh, then I think that you'll see a, a, an increase in the uh, employment numbers. All right, banks are back in the headlines again. JP Morgan reported record third quarter earnings recently with revenue even beating expectations. Hedge funds are alive and well despite fears that Dodd-Frank would freeze the financial system. You touched on new regulations earlier. Can the financial sector get used to these new regulations and move on or no? Yes, we can always adjust to these sorts of things. We have a, a lawyers and bureaucrats who uh, play with the paperwork, but it is increasing the paperwork. It has discouraged uh, uh, public, uh, new public offerings. The IPO market has been in a bear market for years since Sarbanes-Oxley in 2001 that was passed. Uh, Dodd-Frank, I think, is uh, restricting what banks are going to do. Banks have turned into super conservative institutions. In fact, I saw a report the other day where the top 13 banks in the United States have reduced their loans to small business by $2 billion in the last year. So while the banks are looking good, it's because they're taking advantage of the low interest rates, so they're borrowing at low rates and investing in uh, guaranteed mortgages or treasuries and, and pocketing the difference. So their net investment income is going up quite well, making their balance sheets look good. So uh, we're actually recommending JP Morgan as a stock uh, in, in forecasts and strategies, and we've done quite well on it. On it. It's up about 20% uh, this year. So 
uh, it's, they're all taking advantage of this, but it's not necessarily good for the economy because banks are not playing their traditional role of loaning money like they used to to small business, which is where the employment, where the job creation takes place. All right, Mark, last question for you is on the fiscal cliff. You have said that lawmakers realize the gravity of doing nothing, adding they know that bickering can cost them re-election. Let's say they do come to an agreement. Will overall uncertainty leading up to the cliff lag on recovery? And if so, just how intensely? Well, once again, I think it is affecting the employment uh, numbers and keeping businesses from hiring because of this fiscal cliff. There's a lot of uncertainty out there that will be resolved after this election. I do think that uh, Congress will kick the can down the road again and uh, say, look, uh, in the lame duck session after the election in November, they will say, listen, let's extend the Bush tax cuts one more time for maybe another eight months that will give the new Congress a chance to uh, fashion a bill that, uh, that will give us some uh, permanency when it comes to tax rates and so forth. But we still have a serious problem in this country of constantly changing our tax laws and not providing the stability that business needs. I tell people, I said, do you know how long Hong Kong has had its tax code in place of an 18.5% tax rate? Uh, corporate income uh, and personal tax rate. Well, they've had it for over 50 years. So they provide incredible stability and not surprisingly, they've grown faster than we have. So we need to have real simplified tax reform and we're not getting it right now. But the fiscal cliff, I think the market is right about this, that Congress doesn't want to create a, a crisis. And so uh, they don't want to look bad to the American people, to the voters. And so they will do whatever it takes to uh, make a, a short-term uh, uh, change and maybe uh, postpone a decision until after the new Congress uh, comes together in January. All right, Mark Skousen, thanks for being with us today. My pleasure, thank you. And thank you for watching Money News.